year year and a half with this thing and it's a simple thing but it's it's the first step to a bigger process that we've been working on and we have a lot of things in behind the scenes that we don't talk about a lot because it's it's R&D it's development we're not trying to get too many people overly excited of, of anything that doesn't exist yet so it exists now we have inventory on one piece second gear which is what we want to talk to you guys about and we've had quite a few cars running these now successfully all the kinks have been worked out it's been great. It's been handling it in the same amount of power, more power than we can even put to the ground in second gear, which you're limited by traction, so it's kind of how it is. We're going to do a little bit of a talk over, and I also want to explain to you guys, do a little bit of an educational thing where the failure points of these of factory second gears are and why this is important. So let's get into it. What's going on, everyone? We want to talk to you guys about a new product that we have and we're excited to unveil it to the world. And outside of just our four walls, because we've been keeping this an internal secret for a little bit. Some people know about it, not everybody, definitely not publicly. But we partnered up with a company to develop our own billet second gears, which we're really excited about. And we just want to show you some of the differences between ours versus the OEM and the pros and cons to OEM versus ours, because there's a lot of people that talk about or have said and made statements in social media wise or uh, on other YouTube videos where they just say second gears fail, which is very true. We all deal with it. They they definitely fail. And there's really no way around it if you really want to start making power. So we're in a sense where you need second gear. We're in a sense like idea of a drag strip or where you're using second gear frequently. You can't really put a whole lot of power through second gear. You're kind of even on borrowed time with like wastegate. We, we've we had, we actually have had one car. Uh, it was a base model Gen 2 RE someone who sheared off the teeth and it was a bone bone stop car so it was just a service a transmission repair that we did for them where they ended up needing a complete trans replacement because he continued driving for a little while but just skipping second gear not thinking about the fact that all of this material was just going through the transmission and it essentially ended up eating itself so so these can even be beneficial for bone stop cars if depending on where you live and stuff like that and how hard you drive it how frequently you launch it etc etc so one of the biggest differences with our one piece second gear that you'll see you saying the word one piece in, in the description go is a big part of it the synchro is machined with the gear with the entire thing this process this goes through where the, the whole gear is machined these pockets and the synchro gets machined first the back gets machined then it goes to heat treat and then the tooth profile gets cut so that it can be as close to zero tolerance as possible. Otherwise, you have some expansion and contraction and with the heating process uh, that happens. So that's the only way to guarantee that. Outside of that, this is identical to an OEM gear when it comes to the shape and size of everything, the tooth profile, the synchro size, all of it outside of our changes that we made. Our gear is actually made out of 300M. That's what we chose to go with. It's great material. It's very well known in the industry and extremely strong. But we also went with a pretty intense heat treatment process too that I'm not gonna talk about, but this gear is definitely the strongest thing in the transmission once you put one of our second gears in there, for sure. Kind of explain a little bit about how these second gears, the OEM second gears fail, so you guys understand a little bit better versus just knowing that they fail. This is exactly why. The synchro cog is actually pressed on and there is a spline drive that you can see right here, right on the edge. So this gets pressed on and then the load that this gear takes, which is from the synchro, which I'll explain in a second why that is, the synchro takes the hit and then effectively these will shear sometimes if you don't lose the teeth. But there is two piece aftermarket gears out there that exist in the industry too that we've dealt with and we've had failures with that still have a two piece synchro, but they are stronger material, but then the synchros fail. And you really can't even put that much power through those second gears because of how weak these spline drives are. So effectively what ends up happening is this will spin, this will shear. And then either you just rip off these teeth or this thing literally implodes and ends up becoming three, four, five, six pieces. And then you just have shrapnel going through your trans. Sometimes you get lucky and they get encased and they, they just sit in the synchro and they spin and then you have, you hear the noise 
of the splines jumping over each other, but that's just one of the ways outside of the teeth. This one piece gear will not do that. It's basically impossible because the entire synchro is actually supported by the material behind it that it's machined from, machined out of. So there's, the only thing that could really fail with this is these teeth can potentially shear off, but with the power level that you can even get traction with second gear, that's not gonna happen with this. This is just the first step to a process that we're working on and we're excited to sh show it with you guys and release it. I'll give you guys a little bit of an explanation between the stock gear and our gears and why second gears are important and why they play a factor with these cars so heavily. Going back a little bit with how the trans works and why these why these do shear and why this takes the impact first. In a dual clutch transmission, they actually pre-select the next gear with a synchro and then they shift the clutch. So you'll shift from clutch one to clutch two or clutch two to clutch back to clutch one depending on what gears it's paired with, with which counter shift or which input shift, not counter shift, sorry. So what happens is this gear is pre-selected where the synchro sleeve, the slide sleeve is already on here and then the clutch shifts and then what happens is that energy is directly transferred to the synchro because you're not actually in sliding the synchro in as you're shifting, it's already there. So this is the first thing that takes the input impact after the clutch does. So that's where you'll see these things shear or the teeth shear off or you know whatever failure actually happens. But, but that's how that works because the transmission pre-selects your next gear. So if you're in first, the car tries to determine what you're gonna do next. So it pre-selects second and then you accelerate and it's already in second, so what happens is it shifts the clutch and then it just transfers the energy directly to second gear, which is a very quick shift, which is also a big part of why these break because when you have that high of a gear ratio in first and second gear and third too, but when you have that high of a gear ratio, the torque that gets transferred into these gears is much greater than the, the higher gears. This gear, these gears have to actually take a lot more force than the higher gears, so that's why you you don't really hear so much about fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh gears failing. So I don't even, I don't know if anyone's ever even had an OEM fourth, fifth, sixth, or seventh gear fail. Though I've never heard of it. It's possible. We've had a third gear fail once and we're not even sure why. We think it could have just been a fluke. It could have been wheel hop. It, so many things can happen. At the end of the day, they're cast gears and they're pores. It could have just been our luck of the draw with that car in that moment where the gear had a little bit more porosity in it than other ones so yeah it happens but that's kind of essentially how these work in a little bit of a nutshell there's, they're a lot more complex than that they're essentially just trying to predetermine what you're doing as the driver and what you're going to do next whether it's an upshift or downshift so if you're hard accelerating and you slam on the brake and you're in fourth gear for example the car will deselect fifth that it was most likely in and select third which because you're braking so hard you're, the idea is you're going to downshift so it'll pre-select that so the, so the synchros, they don't really take an impact. They don't really get beat up on the sync, on the shift fork sliding back and forth like a normal manual trans does because they're just, they're already selected where you're not actually shifting a gear while driving the car. So it's, it's not two things happening at once. So these don't really get beat up that way. But when the clutch does engage, this takes the first hit. So we started developing this gear about a year and a half ago about at this point with the company that uh, we will talk to you guys about at a later date. We just wanted to start doing some, you know, educational videos and explaining our products and why we're doing the things we're doing and some of the things that we're working on because we are working on a lot of things to support the industry that we don't talk about. And we have a lot of our own products in house outside of just turbo kits where a lot of people, a lot of our, our other competing shops don't. So this is one, of the, this is a big thing outside of the norm that we're excited to share with you guys because at the end of the day we're not gear manufacturers so that's why we partnered up with somebody but they're not that complicated at the end of the day as long as you understand certain aspects of it and how it works and you know metal properties and little things like that it's not that difficult but that's kind of it with this thing we we have a good amount of these in stock we are more than happy to install these for people that want anyone that wants to ship us the trans we'll ship the trans right back this is typically a one to two day install it's relatively quick depending on what else we find in the transmission. Obviously, if, if you had a second gear failure, there's a lot more potential that there's other damage that get, has to be repaired if it's even possible. Um, outside of that, we have a little bit of a trick that we worked into the engagement of the sleeve with the angles of the synchro and a couple other little things in here. There's there's not much to this, but there's certain things that will that help that we've done 
because the shift fork, it's just a C channel shift fork where there's a ring that the C channel sits over and that slide sleeve that actually engages onto this gear or the synchro cog, it's floppy. So by being floppy, if it's coming in on an angle into the synchro pre-selecting, and if you only have 0.3 of a second to shift because you have a 14, 1500 plus horsepower car that is going through the gears very quickly, you only have the amount of time in between those shifts for the transmission to determine everything and make the shift happen, make the exchange happen whether it be the clutch or the shift fork sliding or the, the pre-select of the next gear. So even if you're, just for example's sake, if you're in first gear, you're shifting in a second in under a second at the end of the day. So if you think about it, your, your zero to 60 times are, you know, 1.9, 2.0, 2.1, 2.3, 2.4, or whatever it ends up being based on the build. But that time frame, that transmission has to do a lot of things. And, you, and it also has to apply the load and hold the pressure on the clutch for you to drive through the gear that you're using while using that same pressure to shift. So the pressure actually drops a little bit for the shift. And there's a lot of little factors that come into play with this whole thing. But the best thing you can do is to not delay that sleeve because that, whether it be a millisecond, you know, or however short period of time that that sleeve is sliding from second to fourth or whatever it may be, because it's pre-selecting between the two. When you're in first gear and the car goes in the second, which is pre-selected, it's just shifting the clutch, but it has to disengage first and then engage third. And when you're going from third to fourth, it has to deselect, or when you're in third, it's deselecting second and pre-selecting fourth. But there's only so much time to do all of that action for the trans. So there's things you can do with that, longer gear ratio. So it projects out the shifts and stuff like that. And it just helps by a little bit of time inside of the transmission so that the transmission can do what it needs to do but there's a balance there's a compromise to everything so you kind of got to all that kind of stuff's got to get figured out and worked out so whatever the use of the car is but yeah we wanted to share this with you guys we're going to start doing this a little bit more with a couple of the other products that we have coming out that we're excited to share with you guys this is one of the few things that we're partnered with the company that we've been R&Ding, working with them heavily on with the development the design and everything that we've learned with our cars and everything that we've been doing and things that help and just basic understandings of how the mechanical aspect of these transmissions work and what helps them. So that's it. If you guys need any help with this, if you guys have any more questions, you want to inquire about it, we can sell these gears individually and we can help with installs. Obviously you need a certain amount of set of tools. So it's probably better if people ship us their transmissions and install these because we have all the tools in the house and we have the knowledge and we have spare parts so we can make things happen a lot quicker because if anything goes wrong during anybody's install who's not familiar with these transmissions, you cannot buy a lot of these stock parts to replace things. So we have a lot of stock. We have a lot of things on hand, spare transmissions missions, spare parts, and we have access to replacing a lot of those parts. So we're more than happy to do installs for you guys and ship the transmissions out and we're happily back these gears too. So if this gear fails, we'll just replace it. But we don't see that failing. Not if you have all the other stock gears in the car, this isn't what's going to fail. Something else is going to fail with all the other stock gears. So it's kind of it. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to reach out, email us, call, inquire. We're happy to help. We'll talk to you guys soon. If you guys are interested in getting one of these from us, feel free to reach out, email us, call the shop. We're more than happy to explain anything, any questions you guys have, give you guys any answers on any of it. Hopefully this helps, and we look forward to doing some more of these with you guys.